Welcome to Passionate World Talk Radio. Educate, enlighten, and entertain. Thanks for joining us today on the most important 15 minutes of your day, where we share expert information on safety and preparedness that you can use in your everyday life. I'm Shannon Thiemann, and I'm so thrilled to have you here today for our show, Feminine Intuition, Your Superpower. We will discuss tools we can use to heighten our situational awareness and what to do if you find yourself facing conflict. As women, we have unbelievable intuition skills. We notice when a loved one is off. We feel the vibe and energy of the room when we enter it. We have amazing instincts that help us take care of others. So why is it so hard for those skills to help ourselves be safe? Well, this is an amazing question. I think it's fantastic. And today I have Kelly Sayer here and she is the founder and president of Diamond Arrow Group. And she's gonna join us today to help us answer this question. Kelly believes all women can learn how to be more situational aware to keep themselves and their loved ones safe. She's taken self-defense classes, firearm safety courses, and browsed all the tools that are marketed out there for women to carry for their protection. But what she couldn't find was someone talking to women about how to spot a potential dangerous situation before it happens. That is what inspired her to start her business, the Diamond Arrow Group, with the mission to help women build their confidence so they can move forward and live life on their own terms. Amazing. Kelly is a lifelong learner and has been researching and studying resources on situational awareness for years. She draws on this vast research and knowledge to help women understand how to use life skills that they already have for their personal safety. So Kelly, I'm so excited to have you joining me here today. Yay. Yes, I'm so excited to be here. This is exciting. So can you explain to us what exactly is situational awareness? Well, to me, there's lots of definitions out there that you can find about situational awareness, some more tactical <laughs> than the others. But the ones that I, the one that I came up with that I like to use is having awareness really means using all of your senses mm -hmm. and your intuition to notice when something's off in your environment. And then understanding what that means to your, you and your safety or your loved ones, if you have your loved ones with you. And then lastly, taking action to preserve your safety. Mm. And we can break each one of those downs and go a little bit more in depth because that's still kind of hard to say, okay, but what do you mean exactly? What does that yeah. mean for my real life? Right. When you say five senses, so I'm like, okay, the five senses that we learned <laughs> as a kid, right? Taste, right. smell. Are, are those the senses that you're talking about? Correct. Okay. Yes. And most of us, when we say observe your surroundings or be aware of your surroundings, think of sight. We're looking. What am I looking for? Um, but I always challenge people and say, think of all of your senses. Because if most of us had to pick one sense, that we would give up, or if we had to say, which would you rather lose, your sight or your hearing? Most of us would say, well, I, I'll rather you lose my hearing. But really, when it comes down to it, our hearing is much more valuable. And when you compare the two, well, we can hear at night. Yeah. We can hear around corners. We can hear through walls sometimes, whether that's a good thing or not. So I like to break down and say, okay, yes, sight is important. But we've all heard cases where witness testimony wasn't, or eyewitness testimony wasn't that reliable. What color shirt was he wearing? Somebody swears it's a red shirt. Mm -hmm. and another person swears it was a blue shirt. Right. And so our eyes aren't like cameras. It's not recording everything that you can go back and then replay in your memory accurately. It's really just kind of taking in all the information and only when something really stands out. Yeah that it'll jump out. But with our hearing, when we're walking down a street at night, mm -hmm. you may hear footsteps behind you. Yeah. Um, and that comes from that survival instinct of, I hear something, we can hear faster than usually what we can see. 
And then two, when you go into smell, you know, we, we say the sense of smell actually is really tied to our memories. You know, they say, oh, that smells like mm -hmm. grandma's perfume or yeah. the smell of fresh baked cookies I and our agree. stomachs rumble. We all know what to do if we smell gas. We can't see gas. We can't hear gas, but we can smell it. Right. Um, I always use the example in my presentations of cigarette smoke. If it's at night, you might not necessarily see the smoke or the person smoking if they're around a corner. Right. You won't necessarily see them if they're around the corner, but you can smell smoke. It's distinct. And nowadays with cigarettes not being able to burn without being actively smoked, right. you're going to smell. You know someone's there. Right. And our sense of touch when someone's standing too close to us, even if they're not touching, we can tell that they're too close. We maybe feel their breath on our neck. And it even makes me creeped out to think about that. Yeah. But another thing that I, I talk about for situational awareness is if we were attacked at night or from behind, what can our sense of touch or sense of touch, sense of feel tell us? You know, do they have facial hair? Do they have hair at all? Yeah. If so, what what's that texture of their hair? What what texture is their clothing? And those are all really important. And then Taste, I like to throw taste in there because situational awareness isn't always about the predator in the bushes. This isn't the danger, the boogeyman jumping around the corner. Taste can simply mean milk has gone bad and you don't <laughs> want to drink it because you're going to get sick. Again, situational awareness, instincts, intuition have our best interest in mind and are in response to something. So I like to point all of those out when I say using your senses and trusting that your senses are feeding your intuition and telling you something's not right. I'm, there's something in your environment and whether or not we have time to explain it to you consciously or yeah. whether we just need you to leave. Right. You know, those, those intuition signals. And the more you practice listening, the more you practice looking the more you practice smelling, the better you're going to get at it. I did a little research because again, too, you may have heard people who are visually impaired have better hearing. Correct. Yeah. And it's not that their ears got better. It's not that they're, you know, all the, their hearing senses all of a sudden went supernatural. It's just, they practice more intensely on listening. Mm. So a daily habit to get into is when you're out or just take five minutes in your day, maybe it's that mental break that you need from the million Zoom calls you've been on, <laughs> is to shut everything down, close your eyes and try and pick out how many individual sounds you can hear. Oh. And what are those sounds? Is it the birds chirping? Is it your dog you know, panting or right. chewing on his bone? Is it your kids playing joyfully, right? Because kids always do that, yeah. right? When they're left to their own devices. Yes. They're playing happily. Right. Um, so those are all things that I say when it comes to your senses and really practicing listening to your intuition and understanding what your senses are telling you. And I think that's uh, so insightful on how you're talking about all five of them. Um, I know when uh, Troy and I were at Route 91 at, and at the mass shooting, um, I had some senses that were extremely heightened and then I had mm -hmm. other ones that I, I wasn't needing at the time. Like for me, taste wasn't necessary. Smell wasn't necessary in the, in that situation. But mm -hmm. like you say, my hearing was extremely heightened because I needed to listen for Troy mm -hmm. giving me, you know, cues as to what to do or to hear what direction the, bullets were happening or who was needing help or sight too, like where to go, what to do. So I think it's really great and how you bring in taste because a lot of times I'm like, well, why would you need taste? But not always are we talking about, you know, life threatening situations, you, how you say about the milk or different things like that, you know, or, or how we say, Oh my God, it smells horrible. Smell it. Same kind of thing, right? Like <laughs> the toast is burning. Right? <laughs> so it's like, someone go to the kitchen and take care of it. So I think that's really insightful and also how you're saying to practice them. Well, and I um, think that's, again, we get into the tactical mm -hmm. definition of situational awareness and forgetting that this has real world everyday implications for everyday people. It, you don't, your, your intuition is there to keep you safe. 
and keeping you safe simply might be from getting food poisoning. Right. So yeah. if we can talk about this in a way that everyone can relate to or anyone can understand, it's going to help them say, oh, okay, I get it. I can relate. Yeah. Now it makes sense to me and I can apply it. So and I think one thing you were talking about too, excuse yeah. me, is no. the, the impact of adrenaline on your senses and how we have either heightened senses or to your point, I didn't need taste right. during the, the Las Vegas shooting. I didn't, I needed this and this. Yeah. Or if we're in a conversation in a full room of people and then all of a sudden across the room, you hear someone say your name. Right. Yeah. And it's almost like you can pick that conversation up yeah. and say, wait, somebody said something either about me or something that relates to me and or are you're hearing in a group instantly. that all of a sudden you hear mommy, right? Oh, right. Oh, wow. like, Whoop. Who's? right. Like senses. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah. Well, and how moms know the different cries. Right. Uh, yeah. Like, is it, that a hunger cry? Is that a I'm hurt cry? Is that I'm a mad cry? Yeah. <laughs> so, it's so great on those things. I love so it. So how would you, how would you advise us to use all of our senses and to understand the um, intuition signals that we notice um, that it, like when something's off in our environment? Right. Well, and that's kind of where my second part of my intuition definition comes in is what does that mean to us or our loved one's safety? Because again, the sign or that intuition signal might not necessarily be an immediate danger. Mm -hmm. I show the video of the bear cub that wanders onto the elderly couple's patio in my presentation mm -hmm. and how, you know, they don't, they don't see it at all. The bear cub freezes and they keep walking past. And I'm like, no, again, if we're looking specifically for a human, then we're going to look eye level. So we're not going to necessarily be looking down. And that bear cub wasn't that immediate threat to the elderly couple. Right. It could have been a warning signal of, okay, well, that's not normal to see a bear cub on our patio. Let's go back in our house, get safe, and then take action and what we're supposed to do next. Because I point out in the video in the corner, upper corner, you can see garbage cans. Well, where you usually see a bear cub, you know there's a mama bear. Yeah. And so the mama bear could have been out foraging for lunch. And now this elderly couple who obviously are not going to be physically capable of running mm -hmm. are going to be getting closer to mama bear potentially, and then not have their house because you see the elderly gentleman lock his door. Wow. So it's taking in what are those signals in our environment that says something's not right. You know, something's here that shouldn't be, or something's missing that should be there. Right. And what does that mean? And that's where the, our messengers of intuition have such a range of signals and where it can be that, oh, just that something's not right. My stomach just got tense to, you know, the extreme one of fear. And that's where a lot of people have that tingle up the spine, the hair on their neck stands up. So understanding the levels of our intuition. Again, I, I joke with, in regards to my children, I have young kids is, I can sense where they are in the house or my intuition can tell me that, yes, they raided the kitchen, you know, pantry right. and got snacks without asking because, okay, something's off, whether it's a wrapper laying on the ground or there's chocolate around their mouth. Right. Again, it's not always danger. It's just being very aware and what is our environment telling us? And Does I that mean anything to our safety or not? Yeah, and I think that's great um, talking about how to always be aware of where you are. Like in, um, in our training for active shooter prep, we always talk about knowing your location, right? So like if you're talking about the elderly couple walking out on their patio, okay, well, maybe you should notice there's a brown, you know, <laughs> fuzzy thing over here or like when... Uh, you go to the grocery store. Do you know where the exits and entrances are, right? So if mm -hmm. you needed to do that, or, um, you know, if you walk out to your car and your car is unlocked and we sit there and we think, or like when you come to your house, right? And it's unlocked and you're like, hmm, did I or didn't I mm -hmm. lock that? And right. why is that locked? And so many times, 
well, I know I do. Like, I'm like, oh, I'll just poo poo it. Right. And oh, it's, I probably just forgot and just go in. It. Where, like, yeah, if you yeah, have yeah. my husband, who's a police officer, which Kelly, you know, because your husband's yeah. a police officer, you yeah. know, we come home and all of a sudden Troy walks in and he's clearing all the rooms. And I'm like, what, what, what's going on? I don't, and he's like, the door was unlocked. So, how do we, um, like read these signals to understand what it means to our safety. Cause I, I, I've been in situations even where I'm like, Ooh, the back of my, you know, hair kind of stood up, but I, I have the tendency to um, think, well, nothing is going to happen to me. So how would we respond in that type of situation that we, you know, we, we feel that, uh Oh, um, right. And I, that segues quite nicely into the end is taking action to preserve safety, okay. you know, and, and it's not, it's not Hollywood. It's not always about, oh, the door's unlocked. Now I'm going to clear the house. Cause mm -hmm. guess what? I don't have that skill. Yeah. You know, sure. you and I, the, probably the best thing for us to do is to back out of the, you know, get in our car and leave the house and call our husbands. Right. Again, I understand not everyone's married to law enforcement, but what is then your plan? Right. Is that calling a neighbor who maybe has those skills or, or, you know, people who are single, you right. come home and you're like, the door is ajar. Right. Okay. You don't have to go in the right. house. You can get, getting to safety does not mean entering the building necessarily. Avoidance is the highest level. Mm -hmm. We do not want to put ourselves in danger. Yeah. And so that taking action isn't always sexy, isn't always glamorous. Sometimes it's, it's really boring. Yeah. It's like, hmm, should I walk down that alley where it's dark and creepy at night because it's a shortcut or should I take the long way along the lighted sidewalk? Right. Nothing's, you know, if nothing happens while you're walking along the lighted path, you don't talk about it. You don't say, ooh, I avoided danger because I didn't walk down this narrow hallway, right? I that's what gets so hard too is we don't talk about the boring bland safe right. right we don't glamorize people who play it safe we glamorize the risk takers we glamorize you know the hollywood effects and shoot 'em up scenes yeah and so sometimes i think that reality is where people freeze is because they were like wait i should be really you know, protective nature. And I should really be kind of more of an aggressor on the offense. And because that's what's shown. But if we've never thought about it before, our, our body can't go where our mind hasn't. Yeah. So if we've never pictured ourselves in an actual physical fight yeah. or how to clear a house, yeah. if the door is jarred open, right. then we might freeze. So again, it, it's kind of, let's take away the stigma that you have to do something, that you have to fight, you have to be physical. Right. Um, let's just talk about what's smart. And that's where I love, you know, the feminine intuition being our superpower is a lot of times women we disregard because we play it safe without even knowing it. Our intuition is so well in tuned that we just aren't taking risks. Yeah. You know, the whole frontal lobe cord, um, cortex development happens a lot faster in women than it does men. And again, that's not cool to talk about. <laughs> well, so unless you're a neuroscientist, then they get really excited about that. Well, or my husband, my husband totally geeks out on all that also. So that'll be something we'll have to bring him in. <laughs> yeah, with us on that. So, uh, so Kelly and I could go on on this subject and so many more subjects for hours upon end. And unfortunately, we don't have that time today. So I'm really excited to tell you that Kelly is going to join me the third Tuesday of every month. And we're going to bring up topics like this. I think we'll probably actually come back to situ situational awareness because of the fact that we have so much more to talk about, about it and to educate everybody and, and to share, to, you know, empower ourselves and to keep ourselves and others around us safe. So Kelly, do you want to let everybody know what we have kind of in that store for next month? Yes, we gotta, we gotta bring all y'all back for next week and or next month, I should say the next episode. And really what we wanna talk about is the boundary pushers. 
know, we talk about setting boundaries, setting your strong boundaries. Well, how do you know if someone's testing your boundaries? There's the obvious physical boundary testing of getting too much into your space. Yeah. Um, but how do people test our emotional boundaries? How do they, how do they push past? And it's not only about setting your boundary, but enforcing. Yeah. Because if you can't enforce your boundary, right. then you really don't have a boundary. Right. And if you wait to set your boundaries until you find yourself in that situation, you're going to have a lot harder time enforcing your boundary because you, you won't even know where your boundary is. So we're going to do all talk about all things boundaries next time. That's so exciting. I can't wait. I think, I think you and I are going to just have a great time um, sharing all of your expertise knowledge with everyone. So I'm so thankful that you're here and I really appreciate it. Well, and I'm glad you're watching the clock because we could talk for an hour talk. on these. So good we that you're keeping us on track, Shannon. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, I'm going to have Officer Angela Gura, and she's going to join us to talk about vehicle readiness and to share her expertise on car accidents. So thank you so much for listening today on Passionate World Talk Radio. You've just been listening to the most important 15 or maybe a little over minutes of your day with me, Shannon Zeman. And you can listen to this podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, with knowledge, you have the power. Thank you. Bye. Bye.